stick his nose in it, did he? No. No. Uh, did he? Did he? Did he didn't spoil it for you. Seven. It's been a very, very difficult uh, evening last night. Not too bad during the night, but I um, got a bit anxious about finding somewhere to pitch last night. I mean, it's, it, it is the most perfect uh, position, really, for the tent, but uh, it's way too cold uh, for me. I'm too old. It's too damn cold. Last night, uh, I haven't done much filming because the batteries are just draining so fast. But I've got a power bank, but uh, you know the, the energy is just getting sapped out. It was a little bit windy up to about eight o'clock last night, and then the wind dropped, uh, and then the wind dropped right down to almost nothing—a very light breeze which made things better but I got the tent pitched and I must have been when I got in the tent I must have got pretty chilled up I did I wasn't shaking but I couldn't rate my body temperature wasn't rising properly and it, about by about eight o'clock <coughs> I thought to myself you know, I kept thinking, shall I pack up and walk home in the dark? And I'm on a bit of a ridge. The only difficult bit is a, a few hundred metres down down the ridge, back onto the main track down the Derwent Valley. But uh, I persevered. I got all my clothes on. I put my waterproof outer skin on over all my down gear. And... Uh, got right in my sleeping bag and uh, and then then I got too hot and then it's like we well, don't want to strip down because uh, you know what happens if the same thing happens and I can't raise my body temperature again but then you know I thought well is it just as dangerous to be too hot <laughs> you know <laughs> Because I really was getting hot, and uh, but eventually I, I seemed to settle down, and uh, a more normal frame of mind came back to me, and uh, it, it settled down. It was okay. I had something to eat and a hot drink. I didn't drink anything cold, and a hot drink at uh, about midnight, and I did get a few hours sleep, and I was surprised. Just now I looked at the clock and it's uh, half past seven or whatever time it is. So I'm going to get out for a wee, which uh, I didn't do last night. I just weed in a bottle, but uh, I'm going to get out for a wee. I don't know, I'm not sure whether to carry on with another day or not.
Yeah, just been outside for a tom tit. Bloody cold. <laughs> Good job it's not very windy, but uh, I think it's the cold that's messing with my brain a bit. Anyway, I'm going to get a hot drink on, I think, and see how we get on. Uh, yeah, so, sorry there's not been much filming. It's just too cold. Last night uh, there was a, a big, <coughs> it was like a Sea King helicopter, big one anyway with lots of windows in the side. It was hovering around the hillsides here, obviously looking for some some sort of incident. And it um, it came up to the hillside twice, just just here, and and sort of right its nose was right about 150 meters away to look at me but uh, i didn't really know what call sign to give it for oh, i'm okay so I, I was putting up my tent so i just carried on putting up my tent and it landed down there by cutthroat bridge for about uh, 10 minutes and then uh, took off and headed over towards manchester so that was just something else to make me feel a bit worried last night. <laughs> anyway, this morning when I woke up, it reminded me of the time I cycled over the Pyrenees with a friend of mine. We'd been working in southern France and we bought these cronky old bikes. I think I paid three quid for it. And uh, the first night was on, the, on a road up towards Andorra. And uh, we just... There was no, not much snow about at those low levels, so we pitched the little tent up. It was a just a little tent with no. Uh, it had got no ground sheet. Uh, you couldn't really peg it down to the ground. A couple of wooden poles, a really old-fashioned little canvas tent, and it snowed really heavy in the night. It was about a foot deep when we got up in the morning. And, the, and the, these were trucks were going by up, up the steep hill. Anyway, when we got to the top, Andorra, you know, we was just young kids. We were so excited. And uh, it seemed to be downhill for about two days all the way to the coast. And uh, I remember hanging on to the back of a tractor as well for quite a way. Uh, getting a, a tow with this tractor. Oh. They were exciting times. Anyway, by the time we got to Morocco, which was where we were going, uh, the, all the kids there pestered, uh, pestered us so much, you know, oh, give me something, give me something. But these bikes were about had it anyway, so we just gave them the bikes and started hitchhiking after that. Anyway, that was an exciting tale, an exciting time in my life. and. It just reminded me of uh, waking up in the snow, although this is just a tiny sprinkling that uh, all those years ago. Anyway, that's your waffling bollocks for today. <laughs> now you can see I pulled up some old bracken and put it around the base of the tent last night uh, when I pitched the tent. That was to stop the wind blowing underneath the fly because on this type of tent the fly is, is always quite high, you can't pitch it low to the ground. So that helped a lot.
like a bloody idiot. I, I thought this might be a three a three nighter, but uh, whether it's the cold weather or what, I don't feel brilliant. So I'm gonna uh, I'm gonna be packing up and heading back exactly the way I came, which was. I followed the uh, track all the way up from Bamford, along the Derwent, along the Howden, just past Slippery Stones Bridge. When I mentioned the helicopter, it was Slippery Stones, not uh, Courtthroat Bridge. But uh, I'm going to pack up and head back home. I, I, I don't think I can face another night in these temperatures. <laughs> I just phoned uh, my dear wife Helen up and she's off work, she only works two days a week but she's feeling really poorly this morning, we were both alright. So now I'm thinking my problem is um, I've got a little bit of a bug, I'm, I'm a bit sensitive, I know it sounds wimpy but I am a bit sensitive and uh, I reckon I've got a bit of a bug, so it's the right thing to do is to uh, head back. So that's what I'm going to do. <laughs> Can you see that uh, rock on top of the hillock over there? That's Horse Stone Naze. That's where me and Mark camped when we did the four, um, the four-day hike around the Derwent watershed. And you just make that out. And then you've got to uh, over Bleaklow Way where the sun is coming up on that hillside. That's the that's what the where the way I was going to go with my high ground there and back down the uh, back down the uh, West End Valley. But uh, I'm not now. I don't think my temperature is right. I keep going hot and cold. And like I say, I spoke to Helen. She's not well. So. That makes you feel better. I'm glad I bought my uh, 40 year old winter ski gloves. Oh, bring on the summer. Let's have some nice weather. This is gorgeous, but it is bloody cold. Yeah, looking forward to the uh, better weather. I think I can manage a multi-day hike then. I've done, this is the second time I've tried now. The last time I did two nights. The intention was to do at least two again, but Like I say, I think I'm possibly got a bit of a bug. Because last night it was difficult, to say the least. Difficult. <laughs> Absolutely. So we'll get home and uh, look after Helen. Because she's in bed. Oh, there's a bit of warmth in that sun now. It takes as long to sort all your gear out to go on a hike and sort it all out when you get home as it does to actually go on the hike. 
<laughs> Had a lovely chat to this old boy down at Pharaohs last night. I think he was with uh, two of his sons. Uh, I think he said he were 87 from Hina. What a nice character he was. Yeah, I had a lovely chat with him. Proper old working boat. He seemed fitter than my dad. My dad was fit. But uh, that cancer got him in the end. Now then, I don't think somehow this is going to fit in here today. I'm going to put it on the outside of my pack today because uh, it's soaking wet. Oh yeah, not bad fit. I keep the keep the Tyvek ground sheet separate. There was a bit of snow there when I pitched last night, but it's completely melted. That's how much bloody heat I was generating. Anyway, I've still got my down booties on in my in my boots, so I'm going to get those off and get these down trousers off. Lifesavers, these down this down stuff. I think I'd have died of hypothermia last night, no doubt about that. And again, like I say, it, it could well have been because of. I'm not 100%. That bloody wind, now I've got my down trousers off, is absolutely biting. So, the thing to do is to put my uh, waterproof over trousers on, which of course are. Uh, Nice and windproof, so that'll put the uh, put the wind chill factor down because my legs feel like they're going to bloody just after a few moments feel like they're going to bloody drop off. It's not easy doing stuff when it's cold. You feel like you're. You're bloody rushing all the time, making mistakes. That's that. Windproof shell on. Might tweet before a set off. That's it, everything I planned to do at stupidly again a four day hike. There's enough food in my pack for four days. It's a 45 litre Osprey pack. And um, without my camera and a few bits, I managed to get it down to about uh, 10 kilos which is the maximum capacity for that this pack uh, so that's pretty pretty good really that doesn't include my poles or my camera my big camera so peanut butter and jam on it then we'll be on our way bloody goblins have been out again when you leave your pack unattended they tighten up your straps so that when you come to put your pack back on you can't get it on and you have to undo them <sighs> thank you very much little spot shame it was so cold but I think we'll see you again in the summer and things are a lot easier
this is where the helicopter landed last night and waited for a while. There's some tyre tracks here. I can't remember whether they were there or not last night. But um, it flew up to the hillside where I was camped, sort of three quarters of the way up the bank over there, and uh, to check out what I was doing before it flew off. in the Upper Derwent and this is a little addition to the video. I wanted to tell you a little bit about my trip to the Wireworks White Peak Dis Whiskey Distillery, a new distillery. They've been going nearly four years just south of uh, Cromford they are and uh, we did a whiskey tour. I'm really impressed with the place. It's a big place. It's a bit like a Scottish whiskey distillery and well worth a visit. Anyway, I bought a bottle of their uh, Wireworks single malt English whiskey virgin oak finish, which means it's uh, finished off. Not, f not for too long because it, it's only been in the barrel three years storage, but then they've probably finished it off for four or five, four months in a virgin oak barrel which I think that imparts the type of flavour that I like in a whiskey a bit bitter um, dry but uh, it's very nice and the, the bottle itself is uh, quite impressive as well with these lines on it which are like uh, because the, the, the factory that it was produced in uh, used to make wire so this is a pretty much a cask strength whiskey at nearly 52%, lightly peated, three years in a bourbon cask and then finished off in a vir virgin oak cask. So I'm very impressed with it. It's such a good whiskey. It just goes to show that it doesn't have to be in a cask for like 10 years, you know, you get age statement whiskies, 10 years, 15 years. Um, it just depends on the quality of the cask, the quality of the production, which I think is, is a, to a very high standard at this distillery. 
even got to one of their little glasses that we were given on the tour. So let's pour a wee dram. Or is there an, an English version of the wee dram? We'll stick to the Scottish one for now. Now at £66 for a bottle, I'd say that, compared to what you can buy out there, is extremely good value. So I'm quite happy with that. So if you like whiskey and you enjoy the Peak District, I think you should definitely get yourself down to the Wireworks White Peak Whiskey Distillery and treat yourself.